Welcome to our overview of some of the key new features in Photoshop Elements 10 and we'll also look at some of the enhanced features as well. But let's kick off by ways to organize our shots using the new enhanced organizer. Now you've got your usual keyword options here, you can tag people by dragging tags and creating tags so you can find family members more easily just by clicking here. But you can also go into a shot and use um, options to actually add Facebook contacts as well so you can actually download your Facebook friends list to help name people in the shot and that's uh, quite a useful option but let's go back to uh, some of the new features by looking up at the search function now in theory this search option is really useful because you've got visual similarity searches object searches and duplicate photo searches so you don't actually have to manually add any keywords or scan the shots to add smart tags to them you can just look at the content of the images themselves and gather them together in certain ways for example if we go to select a photograph like um, this one here and choose object search we should be able to find similar objects in other photographs so we choose the object we're after, let's go for this little cute spaniel and then once you've selected him click search object and it's going to search through other examples of the photograph where it thinks the same object is and you've got a 55% match here and there's definitely no spaniels in this particular shot even though it's a 67% match so you can give it a helping hand by using some criteria we can search by color or by shape or somewhere in between the two so if I drag it to the right we should hopefully find some more dog shaped objects and you can see it's determined that that boat has a dog in there and then if we go too far towards shape we now get this boat and this building here and we still have examples of the dog there that it's not too sure about so it's a kind of hit and miss affair but it's a great idea in theory so object search is looking for part of a photograph if we go back to show all we can look at some of the other search options here if we want to find our duplicate photos nothing selected at the moment if I click here it should find very similar looking shots this seesaw shot is quite good because it's actually two separate shots but there is a slight difference in them and we could if they're very similar we could just choose to shift click and select them both and stack them together to make more space in the organizer again we've got two separate shots but they are very very similar they were just taken using a bracketing option there so we can try and stack those as well and uh, these two here are in fact duplicates so you could choose to delete one of those by removing it from the stack and you could then say we want to remove that particular shot from the catalog because we already have a copy and you can also save space on your hard drive as well if you were going to delete something and you choose to remove from catalog you can also delete it from the hard disk by ticking that box I'm just going to stack these two together as well so shift click to select them and stack and then click done when we've sorted out our visually similar photographs and you can see the stack here can be opened up or closed as we need now when you shoot photographs these days you tend to shoot video as well and we do have some video in this particular library so if we go to view and go to media types you can also turn on video and uh, scroll up to see your video clips and the other cool thing about elements now is you can also share your video clips using the share option here and you'll notice that we've got the YouTube option at the bottom here so you can just export them up to YouTube once you've put in all your details and as well as sharing video to YouTube you can also go straight up to Facebook with any photographs by selecting the photograph in question and then clicking share to Facebook it will then prepare a file to upload and you can also type in useful information like the name and location and a description of the shot and you can even use tags you've created using Photoshop to upload onto Facebook and you can also choose what sort of quality you want and of course who's going to actually be able to see the photograph on Facebook but I'm going to cancel that for the moment and we'll move on to look at the actual editing options that they've enhanced and improved in the main editor. So let's find a photograph to fix. I'll select this one here and then we'll go to fix and if I click here we can choose the guided photo edit or the full photo edit. Now guided's got some new things in it so let's go there and I'll show you ways to improve this particular shot by blurring out the rather boring background to help us focus more on the little boy. Now when you're taking your photograph you could use a wide aperture to get a nice shallow depth of field so the background's nice and blurred, getting rid of all the distractions and the main subject is nice and sharp. But when you're on holiday you just want to take a picture as the moment happens and then you can go to the step of field effect which is new and you can choose the guided edit to show you how to create a simple blur or do a more custom one. Let's do the simple first of all, let's click and then add a blur to the shot and then once that's happened we can then choose the gradient tool and draw to define which areas we want to keep nice and sharp so it's going to be the face and the upper torso here that adds a gradient that mixes the blurred layer with the sharp layer and you get a nice selective depth of fields you can then of course scroll down and increase the amount of blur 
by dragging the slider to the right to blur out the background even more. Now the cool thing about guided edit is it is talking you through using standard Photoshop tools and it is creating a Photoshop file. So if we click done and go into the full edit mode, you'll see we've got some layers. There's our um, sharp layer at the top, there's our blurred layer, and there's the original. So we've actually blurred a layer and we've then added a sharp version and we've used a mask to blend between the two. So you can actually see what tools are used to create the effect. So you can then get more confidence with Photoshop and then create these effects from scratch yourself rather than needing to go through the guided edit mode. Let's squeeze in a look at another new guided edit effect. You've got the autumn effect here in photography effects and that flatters a photograph by creating nice blown out highlights and really crushed blacks. And we can add that to our shot by clicking here. You'll see the highlights get really blown out and the blacks get really dark and you can then increase the blur by dragging the slider to the right and that gives you nice diffuse highlights. This is really good if you're doing wedding photographs for example. You can also add noise as well and blow out those highlights even more when um, you want to slide the slider to the right but I'm going to click on done because I don't want to go too over the top with this particular effect and then we can go back and have a look in the full editor and you can see the layers that have been created. We've got a focus layer and a blur layer as well so you can actually see the labels have been added for you and you can see blending modes have been added too to create the final autumn effect. Once you're into the full edit mode you can use tools like the crop tool to improve the composition of a shot by clicking and selecting and you'll find the overlay option here now lets you add a rule of thirds grid to help you with your composition or the golden ratio as well which is a mathematical way of approaching composition that artists sometimes use. If you want to create a poster there's some new enhancements to the text tool like the text on shape tool. You can choose a shape like an ellipse, let's just draw around this flower, let's choose a colour like a nice red, click here and then when you click and draw and move to the edge there you get a little text tool icon you can choose a size, a font and all of the other options and then you can just type in some text which will then follow the shape that you've created so that could be useful for design purposes and if you want to get creative it's worth looking at the enhancements to the smart brush because there's some new tools at the top here like artistic filters if we go to pencil sketch for example and then click and spray to select an area you can see it's adding some new layers to the layers palette it's going to be ready in just a sec and we can then start spraying and turning a cartoon girl in the real world type of effect there by just drawing over the areas that we want to turn into a pencil sketch Let's just click and draw up to the top here and I'm not going to spend ages doing that but you can see that you could have quite a lot of fun with these new enhanced tools. And finally just time to have a look at another guided edit option. If you go to picture stack you can create a collage by choosing the amount of pictures you want to chop this single photograph into and then Photoshop will automatically pop them onto separate layers, rotate them and add borders as well which would take you ages to do if you were doing it manually. But This is a cool way of producing a creative piece of artwork from a single photograph. So in just a sec it should draw that up and create our finished result. We can then fine tune things by changing the size of the borders and also adding gradients as well. Let me just create bigger borders there and then slide down and you can then put a modified colour like this one here or a gradient um, depending on the uh, look of the image that you want. But that's a quick look at uh, picture stacks which is another cool enhanced feature in Photoshop Elements 10.